Do not grow flowers for oxygen. I swear rose metal and cannot figure. Republic of China is not located in mainland. In order to trust a man-made system, I pass a bowl shape of the window, fulfill with ice. Listen careful, Lily. People learn what it means when loyal men sit around the table to discuss a little chance to take over. Woman boils dreams under pajama. At least both sides are comfortable by how they made. Watch your steps. Under the clouds, dark light comes in. Do not grow flowers for oxygen. They will be everywhere or seduced to be pigment. To balance the system, some have split the skin, a few have hidden, most cut off tails, to survive or sign up for surveillance. 不要为了氧气种花，即使散播了桃金娘，我仍不能理解。中华民国不在中国。为了相信人造的秩序，我穿越网状的窗子，里面充斥着眼睛。听好了，百合丽丽，我们发现那是什么意思？当忠诚的男人围绕长桌，讨论征服的微弱可能。女人在睡衣下滚水，至少双方都能接受这个做法。小心脚下，云层下流尽的暗光。不要为了氧气种花，它们不是四处流窜，就是变成颜料。保持系统的平衡，某些人分裂肌肤，某些人藏身，大部分的人剪掉尾巴，为了活命或自愿成为。监视器 ，Thank you. Green, scared, and pretty. There's a red-white disambiguation in the virgin landscape. My little white doll who bathes in tainted water. Yet something of self-knowledge, the unworried concoction of aerosoled air, hair, gaudies the tableau. An ecstasy of shock on the colonial caning. The butch, the naive, and the mousy penai surrounding her aroused her white agony. Cut to the butch who wipes her finger on her shirt. Beyond the pale. Of her complexion, she was taught that with it, this green goes. She was built like a tank in drabs, and her face was undone. Though the unbecoming mark upon it was popularly said to indicate beauty. The rich landscape aflame cheaply. So paid, the brown boy was made to throw himself with vigor against the glass, a carabao chewing distantly on a long frond. By this logic, first defiled and exploded, is a fate not so much to be pitied as depended on. Their end goal of failure. Gleaming sheets of straight black hair, under which two twins labor aimlessly in the loamy, sucking dirt. Meanwhile, the blonde speaks with breath and enunciation of solitary to the overwrought Judy in a bamboo cage. Clasping her arms around her knees, she signaled to herself and to others the perceived superfluousness of her presence. What she did was bounce in transport on the haphazard wagon. She drank them under the table. Was it her exceptional brown body which permitted her to do so? Of all the things I might have expected, was it the sexlessness of her fatigues, her androgyny? Against a dark brown background, she perceives the unscrupulous Oriental in wide-eyed demonstration of the blue within, punished for her swarthy attraction. He had that Neanderthal look to begin with. Natively disturbing plants for food, whose indistinguishable mass of bitter leaves repulsed the pinched-nosed prisoner. <laughs>